Okay, today we're going to finish up a, a road widening project here out at our lake property. Um, this is one small pond in front of me. But as I come in between, there's another pond, a much bigger pond to my right, actually down below us. But you can see the original owner planted these evergreens right next to the road and to get trucks or anything of any height these have been trimmed back but down at this turn just up the hill from the end of the larger pond you can see there's a row of evergreens that we've dug out put down a uh, three inch limestone did about a six foot wide um, extension under the road so we don't have to worry about the trees anymore I already spread right here in front of me I had uh, 20 tons I did uh, last night right when it got dark I got finished um, almost was just enough got a spot at the west end of the curve that needs about another five tons and then uh, once I get that in there there might be some on the edge I need to do but I know this is in the shade uh, this was all done with the bucket and this is a John Deere 5085E with the uh, it's a 24, 2014 it's got the uh, 240 loader I think and this is basically three quarter inch minus it's small and it's very dense and heavy a level bucket is at least a ton um, it's pretty heavy stuff because um, it's so dense but we're gonna go down to the other end of the pond here and I've got another <laughs> at least a 20 ton pile one of the biggest 20 foot dumps I've ever seen in my life but I'll be uh, right back and show you that okay here's uh, my second pile on the north end of the property um, my asphalt company that I deal with they call these either processed asphalt chips or screened um, so these are not directly off the road there are some on the outside edge of this are some three quarter inch chunks but uh, most of this is a little bit smaller so we're gonna pick up about four or five tons and finish that curve and I'll meet you down on the other end. Okay, this first bucket I got was from the outside of the pile, which has been facing south for the past two days, and it's kind of dry. I actually prefer this stuff a little damp, but this stuff spreads like butter. It spreads good when it's nice and dry, but I, I actually, when it's a little wet, it's just like spreading butter on toast. Um, it's excellent stuff to work with. Um, doesn't get muddy when it's wet and doesn't get dusty except it's been extremely dry here this summer and we're like in our fourth mini drought and it's November and it's about 72 degrees out it was cloudy this morning but the sun's trying to poke back out and I have, I'm putting you on pause because I have to keep turning my air conditioner on. Um, if I've got the windows open, I'm just going to suck dust into this cab. And it's still want, it'll still be hot, even though I'm somewhat in the shade here. But these trees are 20 couple years old. There's trees, there's one or two of them that are part, planted right on the edge of the, of the road. That About two feet of it is underneath the pine needles. Um, and as he came farther west, he planted more and more trees close together, and that's why they're so small. The ones on the east side are actually nice, grew nice and large. But they're towards the end of their life anyway, and they're actually starting to die. <laughs> this is a project I've been meaning to do for about four years, but I'm going to need three or four more tons in this curve and maybe one or two farther up on my seam. So I'm gonna finish this part up, 
see if I can make a little smoother pickup from the dump um, with a reverser. Um, you have to kind of hit it timing wise to uh, put it into neutral, not to go too hard into the uh, the pile, and that's a full pile. When it gets smaller, it gets a little bit easier to work with. So I'll be back. There we go. That was rough, but that was smoother. Doesn't matter if I spill it on the road. Shift it into high range. Um, it's a little more damp now if I can pull that up into view. There you go. We're not as dry. Let me set that back down though. Um, When it's damp, it looks almost like hot asphalt. The surface, and I'm driving tractor tires, you can see on this road, the surface will always stay a little bit loose, uh, but driving a regular car and pickup truck tires on it, you've got a property down the road with a 20 foot wide driveway that has semis go on it and it'll pack it down every couple years I need to add some more to it. Um, but it gets pretty hard. Hitting a couple bumps here we had a flood both ends of this side of this is a half mile loop around this pond. Um, the center section wasn't really hard from last year's flood but both ends were redone. After I smoothed that out with my road plane, there's a seam right there. About 140 tons total. No, that was the first day. More like 180 tons. It's a little wider down by my building. Oh, let's see. I want to put some more on the inside of the corner. But CA6 works really nice too. I just, uh, years ago, the company I deal with, their old resurfacer, um, made a, made a very usable product that when my town would resurface streets, I could sometimes get my hands on it. That, that stuff was a pretty, pretty high demand because we could get it for free and delivered for free. They weren't gonna tailgate it for you, but you were gonna get 20 tons at a time. Where was looking better. Next to the pile, if you haven't seen it, I've got a eight foot, um, I think it's a 12 series, 1208, eight foot wide uh, frontier land plane. Weighs um, a little over 1100 pounds. But we're really not going to use it to cut and grade this. We're actually going to push it backwards. I'm going to make one cut in the seam after I add a little bit more uh, material up in the middle of the seam up there. And at least probably one or two more tons on the inside right there. Then we're going to smooth it out with that land plane. As you can see, I don't use my clutch, I just put the reverser in neutral if I need to shift. And um, when I was actually returning to the pile, or on my way down here actually, you might have heard me shift um, in high range um, without the clutch at all going forward in this tractor. So, bought this new and 2014, so it's exact. Actually, I got in November of 2014. So it's 
it's exactly six years old to me, and uh, I don't think I've put, used the clutch and put my foot on it at all in four and a half years at least. in that scene but I'm gonna need the summer not. to left and I'm going to drive back to the west end behind me and push backwards and it will push it to the inside too and then we may go back and forth backwards a couple times and I'll film that off a tripod on, on the hill and on the curve you're only going to see me on that west edge. There's my burn pile. The neighbor's landscaping is coming out here today. Okay get some more chips and spread those out and then I'm going to hook the land plane up and um, we'll smooth it out and finish it. Another bucket. Oh no, that was smooth. But I cheated. I bag dragged some off the top. Neighbor coming by. One thing I can say about this, I'm usually uh, the ground isn't as hard as it was. This I did this with the rippers on a box blade and my front bucket, and I did not put. We got a, about a 300 pound uh, tooth bar to go on my bucket, and didn't feel like rustling that on there and I wish I would have done that but at the end of the day I actually have a backhoe coming out here for some other jobs and I know it was so hard I think I pulled about 40 tons of material out of here this curve I did in the, the second day I was out here till it got dark just like I'm putting five tons in here after all I put in here last night. The morning after I excavated it, what I can see really well, this area right in front of me, I took out another five tons of just solid, hard packed dirt that I just could not believe it was as hard as it was. Harder than clay. I, I've never seen black dirt be so hard because I was basically just going down to the clay. But I did not get my edges as straight and 90 degrees like I'd like to if they're a little, a uh, little bit of an angle to them. But for what this is doing, there's really only one tire going to be at it at the middle. Um, there's plenty of road stone. It's three inch stone limestone underneath this. Um, 
put 10 tons down. Um, it's at least a good layer thing. It would have been more if my edges would have been um, squared off. I would have I picked up 20 tons. Um, and I was thinking I was going to put down at least 15. But it was more like 10 or 12 the way I got it excavated. But, you know, we're not building the interstate here, but trying to do the best job you can in the condition the ground was in <laughs> and the equipment I had available on the particular day. That's what we did. And at the end of the day, uh, we'll find out in the spring if I got any wet spots and if they're bad then, well, we'll get them back out and fix those couple of areas and go on from there. Well, that's looking better. I'm going to put one more on that inside part. One more bucket for that turn. And it's nice and smooth. If you guys have noticed while I've been talking, I uh, tend to spread this out a lot more than I actually need to, because that land plane is, uh, it'll just spread it perfect. I just want to get it in here good enough that I don't have any low spots today. Let's see how it holds up over the next uh, couple months or over the winter. Um, but I think I am going to grab a bucket for um, part of my seam up around the corner. I think I need a little bit of material up there. This stuff just spreads so nice. I'm not. I'm. I'm really just setting the bucket down. Let me see if I can get these seams up here. Well, kind of uneven. Let me get this one right there. Let me put it on float and kind of show you. I'll get part of the other one too. Front float buckets level, and it's just we're in the shade, but that looks nice. I got a seam on the right side of me, but. It's because the elevation's a little different if I get. I'm gonna shave that off when I get my land plane. You can see we got a little bit of elevation, but that's okay. Because the water comes down this hill anyways. I think I need to get some right there in this seam. Right in the middle of me. About right here and back. So one more and we'll hook up uh, the land plane. And we'll smooth her out. Okay, I hooked the land plane up. I'm getting the last uh, bucket of uh, asphalt chips to put over that seam area farther up the turn. But I was going to talk to you a little bit about the land plane on the way back. This is a Frontier uh, 1208. It's got the adjustable uh, skip plates on the outside. Weighs 1110 pounds without the ripper. Rippers on, it's got six rippers. So I don't know if they can weigh five or ten pounds a piece. If you're in the market for one, 
get the heaviest one your tractor can handle if you're actually going to work on hard packed roads if you're going to maintain roads that have workable material you will not need as heavy a one because it'll move it around just fine i'm not gonna lower this all the way down my lift arms are adjusted to where they're float so they have a little bit of adjustment too um, i've got my depth stop on the rock shaft depth stops all the way down the bottom so I'm not going to drop the rock shed completely all the way down I really don't need to grade that road I just want to shave off um, the difference in elevation and I'd rather go over it twice or three times if I have to than do it once as aggressively as possible um, that seems to work out best for me I don't run it all the way down most of the time and I actually push it in reverse like you guys are going to see me do. Hopefully I can set up someplace on the west side of this curve where you can see me go back and forth and the sun is just blazing right now. Um, hopefully I can get you up in this corner so you can see what I'm doing or I might set it well sure where I'm going to set that tripod up, but went too far. Um, let's drop this stuff off a little bit. Right there, just go on it. Oh, I got some back here. I might need two. with is the grader is going to come grab this. I wish I would have got started to do some other things that are going on. It had to be taken care of earlier today. That I didn't get out this morning when it was in the 40s and 50s and cloudy. Like I was trying to do. <laughs> but that's the way it goes sometimes. Alright, I think we're in pretty good shape to. Oh. 